Hi there, I'm Alistair Benn and welcome to Expressive Photography. In today's video I want to talk about contrast uh, and I'm sure you've heard the term millions of times before and watched and read all sorts of books about it but in this video I really want to look at the attributes of contrast, the types of contrast, what we can do with contrast, what contrast means to us, what it means in photography and pretty much the rundown on contrast. Now one of the big problems with learning photography is that we hear these terms that we think we know what they mean and we switch off because we think we know everything there is to know about that thing. Now I've been making photographs uh, since about 2001 when I got back into photography and I thought I knew everything probably in about 2004. Um, I reckon by the time I got to about 2015 I reckon that I knew nothing about <laughs> landscape photography um, having been through this classic learning curve of learning all of these terms about what contrast is and what uh, exposures are and all of these rules and guidelines and I thought I was a pretty good photographer when in real terms I didn't really know anything about photography because I hadn't explored these terms on my own I hadn't created my own expressive and creative language I hadn't <laughs> I just hadn't thought about any of it so what I want to do in this video is look at some photographs, look at the landscape around us and in previous scenes that I've been out and filmed and understand what contrast really means, what it means to us in the field and what it means to us when we're sat in front of the computer. I would say of the five triggers of engagement that I came up with back in 2017, luminosity, contrast, colour, atmosphere and geometry, Contrast has one of the biggest impacts on all of the others in that atmosphere is low contrast. Geometry relies upon contrast of either luminosity or colour to create shapes. Uh, texture, detail, clarity, patterns, all of those things rely on contrast. So I think we, in the landscape it's very easy for us to just think of contrast as being the difference between the darkest tones and the lightest tones, but that is the kindergarten, de kindergarten, that's the German pronunciation, kindergarten uh, definition of contrast, the darks and the lights, and is a very simplistic way of looking at it. So what I want to do in today's video is to dive deep into to contrast and look at all these different types, introduce you to some that you maybe hadn't thought of before and give you some food for thought that you can go off and explore the landscape that you're familiar with in a new, with a new pair of eyes and maybe go and revisit some of your existing raw files and process them with a clearer and better understanding of really what contrast means and what it is doing for you in your photography. So if we take a look at this first little scene here, the reason I came up with the idea of doing a contrast video is I was walking along here and I saw this scene and I thought, wow, that's a <laughs> there's a good example of lots of different types of contrast. So um, here we are. Um, basically, this the reality of the situation, if such a thing exists, is we're in some very tusky grasses. There's a couple of birch trees in there. Um, and then behind those, we have some fir trees. Um, so that's, the, that's what we have. So we have grass, uh, one type of uh, deciduous tree, and then some other evergreen trees. That is what we're looking at. However, we either find this interesting from a, create, a creative point of view, or we don't. And if we don't, then it means we're not very interested in contrast um, or trees. But at the end of the day, there are so many different types of contrast present in this scene that I believe trigger or ask us questions or allow us to organize this content in a way that demonstrates our understanding of 
uh, how cameras see and how we can use and change the, the raw files to create something that is greater than the sum of its parts. And I think that is really what creativity and aesthetics are all about, is to create something that's greater than some of its parts. You know, to take something ordinary and make it extraordinary, I think is such a gift and such a skill. So let's look at this uh, little file back in uh, uh, Lightroom and Photoshop and just see what is in this, how many different types of contrast are present. So with this scene, it's worth looking at the whole image. So this is the, the full frame. Um, as you saw in the back of the camera, I was shooting a panoramic again. However, uh, seeing the full scene is worth it here because it allows us to introduce all of the contrast. So what do we have here? Yes, we have dark to light. That is the classic definition of contrast. Now, all of these light to dark transitions are contrast and yes they are very very important in creating the shape of the frame um, like i said in the original video there these are just trees on a tussocky moorland in front of a pine forest that's the reality of the situation however when we start to look at um, ways of cropping this down to reduce the amount of content in the frame, then we can start to see something that is a little bit more striking and a little bit more simplified. I really think that composition is the removal of things that aren't critical or key content. I think composition should be greater than the sum of their parts. And I think here, by removing things and getting rid of some of the tusky foreground and its very bright uh, yellowy contrast um, is obviously going to simplify this scene. Now, one of the really important things with contrast is to appreciate the role of all of the different types. So let me just quickly grab this. So we're seeing the cropped section. We obviously have light to dark. We then have the purpley color of the birch against the green of the fir trees. That is another type of contrast. We have color contrast. So we have tonal contrast from light to dark. We have color contrast from magenta to green, which is the classic. Uh, that's why we have tint is because green to magenta. So introducing a green to magenta contrast here is going to make the photograph uh, quite interesting, I think. Uh, however, there are other things in this frame. There are textures where we have the textures of the birch versus the textures of the fir trees. We also have geometry that's being created by contrast. We have a light to dark transition here, which is creating this pale line. And we also have this up in the top right hand side of the frame. Now, if I was to process this image, I would be probably pulling this section out. Uh, so let me just go crop it down to something even tighter, pull in that left hand side. And I'm looking now, I'm starting to look at the edge of the frame to see where the content meets the edge. So I've got a little, now that there can come down. So there we go. That seems quite a harmonious uh, way to, to crop this content. So we have all sorts of these different types of contrast in this frame. Um, and I think it's quite striking and this isn't, I mean, obviously I haven't worked this file, but there are definitely going to be ways to simplify the scene, maybe darken it a little bit. Um, so, but for now, these are the main types of contrast that are present. So if we just have a look at the back of the camera here, this scene relies totally on contrast for it to work. Um, it is made up of Various tree layers, there's a few birch uh, isolated on the right hand side there and at the bottom of the frame. Then there's a, quite a, a, a pyramid like one on the left hand side of fir tree and then there's some fresh spring larch uh, in the background there. Uh, now this photograph is absolutely all about contrast. Yes, there's luminosity, yes, there's colour, yes, there's geometry, but all of those things rely on contrast. 
So again, it's very windy out here just now, so we're going to dive back into the studio and examine this one just a little bit further. But I'll tell you, for two o'clock in the afternoon, I love this. Now, I've been no stranger to say how much I like this file. Um, I really do like it. There's just something really appealing about it to me, This the, the way these birch stand up uh, out against the larch trees there. Again, we have the color contrast, we have the shape and texture contrasts, we have luminosity and uh, the darker areas, we have geometry that's, a, that's being created um, by the contrast and also up here we have atmosphere, we have more of a diffused uh, feel to those upper right hand side, I think that's just where the light was drifting in. If we compare this to the full frame, again, it should be really obvious why I cropped this into a panorama. Um, I've managed to get rid of all of this. So that, that line there along the top of the larch, that is more or less a horizontal line. It's almost like a horizon. And by eliminating that with the crop, we are um, taking away this kind of quite a static transition, really a bit of a messy transition. And obviously the big bright patch at the top there. Equally, we have all of this tussocky uh, grass down in the foreground, which is bright and eye-catching and just doesn't seem to sit that well in the comp. So by slicing out that middle, I really feel that I've managed to condense this frame down to its absolute bare parts. And I, I unashamedly really love this one. So we've talked about lots of different types of contrast in this video and um, one I've just thought of just now is the difference between art and craft that is a contrast playfulness and creativity or creative uh, seriousness and playfulness all of these things are types of contrast our attitude can be positive or negative contrast is the root of creativity it is the root of our relationship with our creativity I've been having a bit of fun with this scene here and um, what I realised was that I wanted to try and demonstrate as many different types of contrast as possible. Now with the medium format system um, I'm, I can't quite get that shallow depth of field. This is a 5.6 lens when it's zoomed in um, and I can't quite sort of get enough out of focusness. So what I have done is I've stuck my uh, case revolution 10 stop ND filter on here and that's allowed me to get a shutter speed of about 13 uh, seconds or so and what's happening is, is that the foreground grasses are moving around and blurring and what that is doing to the scene is creating another type of contrast blurred motion is very different from the birch tree at the back which is quite static uh, it's moving around a little bit but it's much less moving than the foreground there and then of course we have the fir trees at the back which again are, are forming this kind of solid backdrop so i've focused right at the back uh, on the birch tree and somewhat on the fir trees also because of the distance they are away and then I'm allowing the 13 second exposure and probably a little bit of depth of field, uh, less depth of field, to kind of abstract that foreground to create this sense of depth and three dimensionality. <laughs> There's going to be a dog coming and uh, photobombing. Come on. Hello. Yes, look at you. Look at you. <laughs> it's not my dog, I wish it was. You snowy thing. Yes, yes. Hello. Hello. Yes. <laughs> yes, aren't you a lot of fun? Hey, what are you doing down there? Right. <laughs> anyway, we'll talk some more about contrast in a short while, but I quite like this scene and I love that dog. So again, in this scene, I've introduced a type of contrast. So this is where I'm using craft. I'm using a technique to change the nature of the content that was present at the time. The grasses are obviously very detailed. They're very geometric. Um, they have lots of texture. But by focusing on the tree at the back there, um, which the, brand, the, the main trunk is quite static, and we are getting some movement in the smaller birch um, branches, but we're getting 
a lot more movement in the foreground grasses. And there are some static areas. There's some uh, areas that haven't really moved. And I think that's helping to add a bit of depth to this composition as well. So again, we have dark to light. We have low contrast to high contrast. Uh, we have motion versus static, which is also a type of contrast. Think about long exposure photography in general rocks and water the rocks are static and geometric the water becomes smooth and atmospheric that is contrast contrast is one of these things in landscape photography that it can be manifest in so many different ways this final scene i think has worked really really well um, he said modestly um, because when I first walked up to this scene, I kind of thought it was really busy. The grass uh, in the foreground there was very, very heavily textured. And, and but I loved this uh, tree growing out of the rock uh, and then how it's mirrored with this one. And then another birch tree off on the left hand side here. So we've got three distinctly separate trees uh, and then the, the bigger boulders uh, in the foreground again. But I was really worried about these foreground grasses being so busy and so textured because they would have taken away the focus away from these trees that I think are the main event in this photograph. We have lots of different types of contrast and most notably we have removed colour. Uh, the richness of the yellowy grasses there again was going to be such a dominant scene contrasting with the deep greens of the fir trees in the background so the color would have become hugely dominant in this and what I've really tried to do is to simplify this scene as much as I possibly could um, to try and reduce the amount of texture com competitive texture I think would be the best way of describing that so again once we in, we're into black and white photography, tonal contrast becomes very, very important. Light to dark it is the classic tonal contrast. However, the contrast between motion and static has become a really important part of holding this composition together. Sometimes landscape photography really is an action sport. I remember Gail and Raoul saying that a few years ago. Uh, back in the early 2000s when I was just getting into it and I didn't understand really uh, what an action sport could mean in terms of landscape photography. I always thought it was standing around for hours waiting for the light. Uh, there was some really cool clouds just on the horizon there um, which I noticed when I was speaking to a lady there and uh, by the time I ran along there they'd, they'd moved unfortunately. But um, what I have put on here is I've got my case Revolution Circular Polarizer and on a day like this big blue sky 90 degrees from the sun there so in that direction and that direction we will get the maximum polarization now because I'm using a 100 to 200 millimeter zoom lens here I don't have any of that uneven banding that you can get with a wide-angled lens and a circular polarizer so I am just keeping my eye on some of these clouds because in their own right they're quite beautiful subjects uh, the ones that are drifting over to the north there. Uh, so yeah, circular polarizer is a perfect way to add contrast. If I roll the circular polarizer off, the sky gets less dark. And particularly with a black and white preview, very, very dark skies with the polarizer and then they get more mid-tone grey, which means less contrast between the clouds and the sky. You can see them behind me there that they do stand out because of the luminosity of the clouds themselves but by darkening the blues and you can do this in post processing sometimes just by a black and white conversion and then pulling down the blues and that will create a darker uh, but at the same time pulling you can get artifacts doing it that way so using a polarizer in the field is pretty much the surest way of getting it so again just more contrast uh, pointy trees, nice fluffy clouds, dark uh, blue sky, um, contrast, it's all about contrast, there's a theme here, I should make a video about it.
Well, I'll be honest with you, I've had a complete blast uh, making this video. Um, I love contrast, uh, as you can possibly tell. Um, I think it is such an important thing for us to be able to not just understand from a technical point of view in terms of black points or white points or the zone system that Ansel Adams talked about was very much about contrast. You know, from a classic tonal point of view, contrast is quite an obvious concept. However, when we start to consider all of the different types of contrast that are present in the landscape from <laughs> warm, beautiful, energetic colours to slightly more subdued colours to textures, to details, to shapes and patterns which are all part of contrast. And by the time we start to infuse that with our own perspective, our own emotional spectrum, our own personality spectrums, the way that we uh, manipulate or manage our attitude and our expectations when we're out in the landscape, these are all contrasts. Uh, we can have good days and bad days, happy days and sad days, but most of the time a lot of that is really just perspective. Today has been a blue sky day with big fluffy clouds, the wind is picking up now, um, there's an occasional chill in the air, I was decidedly overdressed when I left the house the, at lunchtime today. However, um, I've had an absolute blast and you know, some people would definitely say you just cannot go out and make photographs at lunchtime on a sunny day. And I would say to them, well, I have and, and I like them, so um, the rest of it's just your problem. It's not my problem. I've had a wonderful time this morning and this afternoon, so um, I don't think I've got a problem at all. Whether people like the photographs or not is entirely immaterial to me. It doesn't matter one iota, one jot, uh, whether they're popular photographs or not. Uh, they've been made with passion and integrity and love for the landscape. And my relationship with contrast and my creativity has never been better. So I, I think, like I stated in this video and in previous videos, the absolute purpose of expressive photography is to try and improve your relationship with your creativity and your relationship with the landscape and how you see and how you feel and how you find things to point your camera at. Contrast is one of the biggest triggers that you're ever going to get. I will be discussing the other, the other four of luminosity, atmosphere, geometry and colour in future videos along with all the different types of lighting conditions and how we can cope with those. <laughs> the way the iPhone has fallen on the ground has created some beautiful soft atmospheric contrast. <laughs> <laughs> the wind has picked up. That is nature telling me it's time to head home for a beer. So I'm going to do that right now. Thank you very much for watching. Please hit the subscribe button. I hope you've enjoyed this content and learnt something and can use that to move forward with your own creativity. Bye for now.